Okay, gonna do a video on this uh, Satanist here, this conditional security Satanist by the name of Warriors for Christ. Yeah, he's not a warrior for Christ, he's a warrior for the Antichrist, and he's a warrior for his father, Satan. And I'm gonna show you the video that I'm gonna be refuting. Let me just do full screen. Uh, he basically is a work salvationist. He, doesn't, he denies it, but he teaches uh, a workspace salvation that salvation is basically relying on you having to do things to keep yourself saved, that is works. And uh, I've said this for a long time now, that if you believe you can lose your salvation, you're saved by works, because that means you're having to do, you know, works and, and holiness to be saved. And obedience is works. Okay, they can deny all they want. And a point I want to bring up too, is that one a lot of things, one way to tell these conditional security heretics are lost, is because they have no knowledge of the new birth. You see, people who deny conditional security, or sorry, people who, who deny eternal security uh, will say, well, you can just live however you want and commit sin and whatever because they have no knowledge of the new birth because they're lost. They've never experienced a new birth. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes into your life and cleans your life up and gets sin out of your life, okay? However, it's not done to be saved or to stay saved, okay? When you're saved, you know, if you were uh, basically, I'll put it this way. The drug dealer does not keep dealing drugs. The fornicator doesn't keep fornicating. The prostitute doesn't keep playing the harlot. Uh, you know, the uh, sodomite doesn't keep having his homosexual affections, his sinful affections. See, it's the Holy Spirit cleaning your life up. It's not you cleaning your life up to merit your salvation, like this wicked little Satanist here teaches. And yeah, I call him a Satanist because I've showed in my other videos, because this guy is also a sinless perfection heretic as well. Uh, what it comes down to is that these people are of their father, Satan. You see, Satan's first lie he told Adam, or he, sorry, he told Eve in Genesis 3, 5, was, ye, can, ye shall be as gods. Let me show you that verse, actually. Ye shall be as gods. And that's exactly what these sinless perfection heretics uh, will do. They are teaching Satanism. Sinless perfectionism is a form of Satanism. Genesis 3, 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? These people think they can be holy and be like their own god, essentially. Because if you if you think you can be sinlessly perfect, then you're basically becoming your own god. Because Revelation 15, 4 is clear that God is the only one that is holy. You're not holy without Jesus Christ and his righteousness. But this wicked devil here, this... Um, false prophet thinks basically is trying to be holy on his own, trying to marry his own salvation, just like a Roman Catholic would. Okay? He's preaching Roman Catholicism and he's teaching a false gospel. Okay? He's teaching a false gospel of self righteousness, of you having to basically it, it's like a, what Paul says in Romans ten. Let me turn there. Oops. Hit the oops I pressed the wrong button there. Uh, Romans chapter ten in verse 3. This is a good description of these people, these uh, conditional security, uh, imputed righteousness denying heretics. Romans 10 3, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness are going about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Okay, again, uh, these people have no knowledge of the new birth. Okay, it's Jesus Christ. Uh, who changes your life. Jesus Christ cleans your life up after your salvation. It's funny because people will attack me and, you know, call me, say that I'm teaching lordship salvation and I'm, I'm backloading works and I'm basically, you know, teaching work salvation because I say that the Holy Spirit cleans your life up and there's a changed life after your salvation, okay? But you want to talk about work salvation, these are the people who teach work salvation because they're trying to establish their own righteousness. They're teaching salvation by your self-righteousness. And if you, if you read Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 15, Satan was self-righteous. He was saying, I'll be like the Most High. I'll ascend to the throne of God. Paraphrasing, of course. But these people are of their father, Satan. Okay, anybody, okay, mark my words. Anybody who denies conditional, or any, sorry, anybody who denies eternal security, okay, is a child of Satan, okay? I'm not saying just deceived by it, but I'm saying militantly against it, like this guy is. He's a child of Satan. He's trying to earn his salvation by his self-righteousness, and he's gonna burn in hell because of it, okay? And let him be accursed. He's teaching a false gospel. But gonna go through this video and, and watch how he just takes everything about salvation and puts it back on you and saying, see, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this, you know? So it's not about Jesus Christ saved me, it's about me saving myself by my works and self-righteousness, okay? And I'm gonna prove to you, actually, let me just do it right now, just to get it over with. Just to hammer this point down, because he tries to say that oh, obedience is not works. Yeah, it is actually. Okay. Again, repentance of sin is not you stop sinning to be saved. Okay, you can't stop sinning to be saved. That is a that is a heresy. It's a false uh, false gospel. Okay, 
repenting of sin in the context of salvation, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 8-11, to 11, is godly sorrow over your sin. It's godly sorrow for sinning against a holy, righteous God. Okay, You have godly sorrow, you have conviction, and you say, I've sinned against a holy, righteous God. I deserve hellfire. I didn't deserve to have Jesus Christ die for me on the cross. You know, and then of course Romans 10, 9, 13, you call upon the name of the Lord. Okay, that's what repentance of sins is. Repenting of sins is not you've stopped sinning and living holy to be saved. That's Roman Catholicism. But Jonah 3, 10, okay, here is proof that obedience is actually works. Okay, Jonah 3, 10, and God saw their works, okay, what are these works? That they turn from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he said he would do unto them, and he did it not. Okay. God saw their works. Well, what were those works? They turned from their evil way. They obeyed God and turned from their sin. Okay, It wasn't having God to serve their sins. They actually were stopping their sin. And of course, God repented of the evil. But you see, God is linking that with works. And God saw their works. And the works are that they turned from their evil way. So yes, obedience and holiness is works. So he, so I want to point out, because he, try, he tries to deny, oh, it's not works, it's not works. Yeah, it is. You see, these heretics love to deny, oh, we don't preach works salvation. Yeah, you do. They're teaching salvation by your self-righteousness instead of submitting yourself to the righteousness of Christ, like Romans 10.3 says. So we're going to start refuting this video and just, again, watch how he just takes everything about salvation and just perverts it and twists it and puts it back on you. And watch how he just has no knowledge of the new birth, okay? Because he said, again, you just say, oh, you can just live however you want. No, you can't, okay? When you sin, God will chasten you. When you sin, God will punish you. You can read about that in Second or First Corinthians 11, 28-32. And Hebrews chapter 12, I think it's verse uh, 5 to 8, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, God will chasten you when you sin, okay? But it's not to be saved. You can lose your health, you can lose rewards, you can lose your spiritual joy, you can lose fellowship with God, but you won't lose your salvation. That's a big difference, because you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, but again, these people have no knowledge of the new birth. They have no knowledge of spiritual regeneration, which is the Holy Spirit cleaning your life up and getting sin out of your life, the changed life after salvation. They believe you have to change yourself to be saved, which is work. So he takes everything about salvation and, and twists it and puts it back on you and your self-righteousness. Okay, it's funny because Isaiah chapter 64 verse, actually let me go to that verse. Isaiah 64, make sure I have the right verse. Isaiah chapter 64 in verse 4, I think it is. 64 in verse... You know, so it's Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. My bad. Isaiah 64, 6. But we are all as uncle as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Okay? Your righteousness before God is, a fil is filthy rags. Your self-righteousness. So I just had to point that out. But going to get into refuting this video. Correct? You have to believe. So by you believing, are you contributing to your own salvation? I mean, think about it. Think about what you say before you say it. Okay. Yeah, that's another argument these devils like to use. Oh, you know, believing us part of your salvation. Now, again, you know, I don't. I'm not an easy believer. Okay, here you have two. You have a, two, a false dichotomy. You have, oops, hit my mic there. You have a false dichotomy. You have the lordship salvation, sinless perfection, work salvation. You know, self righteous heretics on one side. Then you know, on the other side, you have the easy believism, no repentance of sins, no godly sorrow. Just I believe, and that's it. Okay, both sides are false. Okay, the middle ground is that the middle ground is basically that there is repentance of sins for salvation, but it's God to serve your sins, and then you do believe. Okay, that's the big difference. Okay, we're not work salvation, which is the lordship salvation, you know, self righteousness, but we're also not uh, biblical Christians. I'll put it that way. Biblical Christians. When I say we, I'm referring to biblical Christians who believe the true gospel found in First Corinthians fifteen one through four are also not the easy believism of no repentance of sin, no God to serve your sins. So you have a false dichotomy there. But I want to point that out. These devils like to say, oh, you know, belief in, uh, is a work and whatever. It's ridiculous. Okay. But just wanted to point that out. I'm not an easy believism heretic. Uh, I do believe in repentance of sins for salvation. Okay. God to serve your sins. Uh, repentance is a scriptural doctrine contrary to what the easy believe. I mean, when I was a false convert, I, I used to be easy believism as a false convert, but I thankfully praise god came out of that so uh, let's continue so what i'm going to do is you know if you remember the other day we talked about you know trading truth for a lie and this is kind of going to go under that umbrella if you will 
<clears throat> because it, it is it is exactly that it, you know th this doctrine of imputing the of christ eternal security once they've always saved it all falls under the umbrella of trading the truth for a lie because that's essentially what they've done okay we we, we left off uh, on the on the last one about love you know and and for all the hoopla we make about love you know again the bible tells us the love of god is what that we keep his commands okay he's quoting from uh i believe it's uh first john I think it's 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. Yeah, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Amen. You keep his commandments if you love him. If you love him. However, keeping your commandments is not part of your salvation. You see, again, he's putting you back under the law. Okay. What did Jesus Christ say about that? Not Jesus Christ. Sorry. What did Paul say about that? My bad. Because Paul is our, if you're a Gentile, Paul is your apostle. See, that's another thing these, these heretics are as well. They're non-dispensational. They don't rightly divide the word of truth. They'll take things like from the Old Testament about, you know, Ezekiel 3.20, Ezekiel 18.24, about, you know, if a righteous man turns from his righteousness, he dies in his sin. They'll take that, uh, which are written to Jews under the law, and they'll apply it to a Christian today. Or they'll take things from the Gospels when Jesus Christ, you know, from the Sermon on the Mount, which is for the Millennial Kingdom. It's not for Christians today. Or they'll take things from Matthew 24, which... Again, who is it for? It's for Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Or the non-dispensational. Like they go over the Bible and just make a big mess of scripture. Uh, but Galatians 2.21 I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law then Christ is dead in vain. Okay, If you're able to keep the law and keep the commandments to be saved, Christ died for no reason. Oops. The, hit the thing there. But that's what Paul's saying here. If you're able to keep the law perfectly to be saved then Christ died for no reason. He's making the cross of Christ have none effect through his self-righteousness. Let me show you another verse of scripture. Again, leaving no stone unturned. Um, now here's actually a verse that people like to use that actually try to refute eternal security, but I'm going to show you how it's actually teaching the opposite. Galatians 5.4 Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. And they hang on that last part. You're fallen from grace. Um, what's the context? Again, they don't read context. Again, that's another thing people do. These conditional security heretics will just rip verses out of context, but they never read the context of what's going on. In context, Paul is actually condemning the conditional security heretics and their self-righteousness. Because notice how he's saying, Christ has become of no effect unto you, and he states the reason why. Okay, Why does Christ have no effect unto them? Whosoever of you are justified by the law, okay, then you're fallen from grace. What's Paul saying there? Okay. Paul is saying that if you're going to go back under the law and try to save yourself by the law, then basically Christ died for no reason. Christ has no effect unto you if you're trying to save yourself by keeping the law, which is exactly what this heretic is trying to do. Christ has no effect unto him because he's trying to justify himself by keeping the law, keeping the commandments. You know, So as a result, he's fallen from grace. He's teaching, uh, basically going back under the law. I mean, it's heresy, it's work salvation, it's Roman Catholicism, it's all it is. And his commands are not burdensome. And it's important to remember that because that is a requirement that we have to do. So many people say they believe in Jesus. They say they love Jesus. But Jesus is, if you love me, you will obey me. And then you find that these same people will actually preach that it's okay to disobey Christ, that even if you are in disobedience, that you're still going to be saved. But, if G but, but the Bible says the love of God is simply keeping his commands. Now, there will people say that if I say that, that I'm preaching a works-based salvation. Uh, you are. Again, Jonah 3.10 shows that obedience is works, okay? If you're having to save yourself by obedience, and he'll say, well, I'm not saving myself. Yes, you are, okay? You're saving yourself by your obedience, okay? It is works because it's saying that basically Jesus Christ's death on the cross was not enough. I'm having to basically purify myself. It's wicked. It's a false gospel. Again, it's just Roman Catholicism repackaged. That's all it is. Well, then I guess the Bible preached the words, 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. So, for all, again, all this stuff here takes a lot of mental gymnastics. It takes an awful lot of... Again, you got to be careful, too, because uh, John, the epistles of John, are, John was not the apostle to the Gentiles. Let me show you the scriptures on that. Again, these people just have no, no knowledge of the Bible. Because, again, they're lost. They, have, they, don't, they, don't, they don't have the Holy Spirit to guide them into all truth. They're not saved. And so they can just twist scripture and rip it out of context. Romans eleven thirteen. For I speak to you Gentiles, insomuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Okay? If you're a Gentile Christian, Paul is your apostle. Okay, not John. John is not your apostle. Uh, there is some things in the epistles of John that can be uh, for instruction in righteousness, but John is not John was not writing to Christians, okay? 
John, the epistle, the epistles of John are not completely written to Christians, okay? Because again, Paul is your apostle if you're a Gentile Christian. Sorry about that. Uh, so again, these people have no knowledge of rightly dividing the word of truth. Go there. Romans 15, 16. That I should be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of, of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Okay, Paul is a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. D jump down to, uh, I think it's uh, verse... Yeah, that actually was a verse I was looking for. Okay, and notice how, too how verse eight says, "Now I say that now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision." Okay, Jesus Christ was to the Jewish people. Okay, he was not speaking to Christians. Christians were not around during the time of Jesus Christ. But then verse sixteen of Romans fifteen says, "Jesus Christ, or sorry, Paul is a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles." So, again, they they ignore Paul because of course Paul condemns them, and I'm going to show you that. And they just run over the Bible and just make a big mess of scripture. Because a failure to rightly divide, 2 Timothy 2.15. Oh, which is actually kind of funny too, I want to point this out as well. Is that he he's against King James only. He, calls, he says that the King James only cult. And he's, you know, attacked King James only. And say that, you know, we're a cult or whatever. People who believe the King James Bible, oh, they're a cult. Uh, he's big on the modern versions. And it's ironic because the modern versions take out rightly divide in 2 Timothy 2.15. So... You know, it removes dispensational teaching. So, plus the modern versions teach work salvation all through the thing. So, uh, it's not surprising that he's a flaming heretic. Lips to get around these things that the Bible says to simply state things like nothing is required. We simply have to believe, and anything other than that is works based. Well, what's the difference between you believing and me obeying? What is the difference? Uh, the difference is, is that obeying is basically holiness. Okay, obeying is basically you having to do things to please God. You're doing works. You're doing. Uh, you're cleaning sin up in your life with the help, the help of the Holy Spirit. That's obedience, okay? Obedience is you follow the commandments. You know, Romans uh, 13, 9 tells the commandments for a New Testament Christian, you follow those, okay? The big difference is, is that you're not doing that for salvation, okay? Faith in the gospel and repentance is for salvation. But see, this little devil here is trying to say that obedience is part of your salvation. Keeping the commandments is part of your salvation. So he's saying, oh, what's the big difference there? See, I was trying to be very deceptive and trying to say, what's the big difference? It's still things you do. Uh, no, it's not, okay? The big difference is that obedience is done after your salvation to please God and get rewards in heaven, okay? And it's done by the help of the Holy Spirit, too. Again, just showing he's got no knowledge of the new birth, no knowledge of spiritual regeneration. He's lost. He's, he's dead in trespasses and sins. I mean, complete ridiculousness, some of these doctrines that are out there today, Okay. One saved, always saved is probably the biggest lie that the church world teaches. It teaches that nothing else is required of you, that you can get See, saved. Nothing else is required of you. See, it's all about what you do, okay? It's about your self-righteousness, not about Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Oh, no, you're having to save yourself. You see? See what he did there? It's about what you do. See, there's nothing required of you. He's a, a papist. That's all he is. He's a, he's a Roman Catholic. He's teaching Roman Catholicism. Today, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, you could never forfeit your salvation. The people who uh, first of all, it's not your salvation; it's the salvation that God gave you. Okay. This garbage say that obedience is not necessary, and then endurance and continuing belief in Jesus is not necessary yeah, either. Yeah, endurance. Of course, these devils always like to quote Matthew twenty four thirteen and Matthew Matthew ten twenty two, which talk about enduring. Okay. Again, who was Jesus speaking to in those passages? Okay. Again, Romans fifteen eight. Uh, Jesus was a minister of the circumcision, okay? He was speaking to Jews. Those aren't written to Christians, okay? Matthew 24 is dispensationally for, for people in the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew 10, uh, Matthew 10, I do believe that Matthew 10 is also for the time of Jacob's trouble. The reason why that is so is because a lot of what's in Matthew 10 lines up with Matthew 24. So I do believe that Matthew 10 is also dispensationally for the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not for Christians today, okay? Christians does not exist during that time period. But of course, these devils always like to quote that passage. They have exchanged the truth for a lie in that you cannot forfeit your salvation. That's what they believe. They have exchanged the truth that Jesus yeah, you, came. You've exchanged the truth for a lie that you can be you can be holy like just like God. Okay, he, he's exchanged the truth for a lie that you can basically be your own God. Ye shall be as gods. You know, you you think you can be sinless just like God. Okay, who's really exchanging the truth for a lie? To free us from the power of sin for the lie that we are incapable of stopping sinning. 
That's well, you should live holy on, okay? But he's saying it had to be sinlessly perfect. See, when he's when he's devilishly so going to stop sinning, they're basically saying live sinlessly perfect and basically be saved that way, okay? Uh, it's heresy, okay? Sinless perfection is a wicked heresy. It's it's Satanism, okay? I, I showed that in previous videos. Just go on my channel and search up sinless perfection is uh, Satanism, and I prove that sinless perfectionism is a form of Satan worship. It's a it's true Satanism, okay? Sinless perfectionism again is is you know I'd like to the, to link it to the first lie that Satan told at Satan told Eve, "Ye shall be as gods." You know, sinless perfection. You can be sinless and holy just like God. You can become your own god. It's a lie from Satan, sinless perfection. It's a form of Satanism. That's what they say, and they have to believe that. They have to believe that we're incapable of stopping sinning, or else the rest of their doctrines fall apart. But that's not what the Bible says. They have their proof text, but when you take it in context, none of it adds up. Okay? They'll use verses like, oh, you know, no man can pluck you out of my hand. That's right, nobody can pluck you out of his hands. Nobody can take your salvation from you. Nobody can. That is the truth. That is what the Bible says. However, you can forfeit your salvation. That oh, so then you're more powerful than God. It's funny, these devils always like to make that argument too. Oh, you can you can forfeit your... You no, know, they'll say, well, you can't be plucked out of God's hand, but you can pluck yourself out of God's hand. You know, see there? Yeah. Uh, if you can pluck yourself out of God's hand, that means you're more powerful than God. Okay? Which is ridiculous. Let me show you that. John chapter 10 and verse 28. You see, notice how he didn't tell the people... You know, turn your Bible to John chapter 10, verse 28, okay? He's not going to show the scripture, and I'll, and I'll show you why he didn't show the scripture, because it debunks his whole argument. They'll see these, these, again, another thing these devils do is they'll just say, well, the Bible says this, the Bible says that, or they'll quote verses, but they won't give the chapter and verse, or they won't say, hey, turn your Bibles to, you know, book, chapter, and verse. They won't do that, and here's why he didn't do it here. John 10, 28, and I give unto them eternal life. See, it's Jesus Christ, he gives them eternal life. You don't give yourself eternal life by your... Uh, obedience and self-righteousness but look what he says next and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand my father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand okay jesus christ gives you eternal life and he says you'll never perish okay but apparently you can forfeit your salvation and make yourself perish so me, me basically what it's saying is that you're basically more powerful than god apparently wicked blasphemy i get, I get just it's total blasphemy really that's what it comes down to Again, that is not somebody taking you out of Jesus' hands. That is you turning your back. But again, when you have this belief in your head, when you've been so infused with this, when you've been infected with this lie, you read things in the scripture that simply aren't there. Yeah, like and I you've been infected the with the lie that you can become your own God. You know, funny, all these arguments he's saying, I could just use, use right back on him. He's been infected with the lie that he can be his own God. He can be sinless just like God. Okay, He's been infected with Satan's first lie he told Eve in Genesis 3.5. Many times the Bible is so easy that we actually need help to misunderstand it okay that's what the bible says they've traded the truth that god requires us to live holy lives for okay see god requires us to live holy lives to be saved see again he's saving himself he's not again it's not about jesus christ saving me it's you saving yourself by being by living holy to be saved total works-based salvation it's a false gospel and he's going to burn in hell. Again, Isaiah 64, 6, your righteousness, righteousness are filthy rags in the eyes of God. You know, he'll become before God and say, you know, God, I did all these things. I, I live holy, aren't you? You know, I, I did all these wonderful works in your name, like, you know, Matthew 7 talks about. And God's going to say, hey, you know, you're lost. Hey, not that exact word. Okay, don't, you know, I'm sure the people that, people that attack me are going to like just take that and say, oh, you're, you're changing the scripture. But you get the point. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Okay. Uh, it's ridiculous, okay? He's the one being affected by Satan's law. He's self-righteous, and he thinks he's, he's his own God, essentially. So here we go. Let's start with this. Let, let's really dive into this in or a cause. Christians believe that it's the righteousness of Christ that is charged to us that when we sin, God doesn't see the sin. He sees the writers over or hides your sin. This is a lie. The truth is God does see sin. He is not naive. He isn't blind. It was sin that separated man from God to begin with. And to pretend that just because Jesus died on the cross that God doesn't see your sin anymore, it's just a flat-out lie. Okay? <clears throat> and I see we already have uh, one of our once-saved, always-saved friends in here. They're, they want so, so he says... 
It says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. Not if you don't, you can't lose your salvation. So again, so they, they interpret the Bible based upon what it doesn't say. But again, when you go through the Bible, we'll go through this today. It's important to take scripture in its context in the surrounding verses as well as the letter and then the Bible as a whole. You see, when you chop and slice and dice and you take your verse here, take your verse here, you know, and, and you do the Thomas Jefferson method in the Bible where you cut things out and sharpie this, sharpie that, uh, it doesn't make sense, okay? People so desperately want to cling to the belief that no matter what they do in life, they're going to go to heaven because, again, most people don't really want to give up their sin. They claim that they don't want to do the things that they do. They just... Again, he's just proving he's lost, okay? No knowledge of the new birth. When you're saved, the Holy Spirit will come in and he'll, he'll give you new desires. He'll give you, you won't, you won't want to live in a sinful lifestyle. You have new desires, okay? Okay, again, these devils that just keep proving they have no knowledge of the new birth because they're lost. They've never experienced it. He's still lost and dead in trespasses and sins, okay? But on this thing of the imputed righteousness, because this guy's just a disgusting papist. He's going to burn in hell. Um, I pray he gets saved, but if he doesn't, uh, it's uh, pretty bad because he's going to, uh, again, he's the kind of person that would boast. You know, you read Luke 16, 9 to 14. Uh, he, he would be the Pharisee. He'd be like, oh, I thank thee, God, that I am not as other men are. Adulterers, unjust, you know, that kind of thing. He's a Pharisee. That's all he is. He's, he boasts of his self-righteousness, self -righteousness, just like a Pharisee would in Luke uh, 18, verses 9 to 14 in that parable. Uh, 1 Corinthians, on the thing of imputed righteousness, 1 Corinthians 1, 30. Here's some good scriptures that prove that. 1 Corinthians 1 30, but of him ye are in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Okay? He made you uh, righteousness. Okay? Uh, another good verse on that. Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. Here's a good verse to use against these papists, like warriors for Christ. Yeah, he's a warrior for the Antichrist. That's all he is. Philippians 3 9, and being found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, you know, like trying to keep the commandments to be saved, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. How do you receive the righteousness of Christ? By faith. Okay? Not by your own righteousness, not by uh, your righteous, righteousness by the law, like Romans 10 3 says, but by the faith of Christ. Okay, sorry about that. My uh, computer ran out of disk space, so I had to clear some space, but. Yeah, on the thing of uh, imputed righteousness, okay? Because again, these devils, they don't want to give up their self-righteousness. Uh, Romans chapter 4, I think it's uh, verse, I'll start at verse 5 actually. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Hmm. Verse 6, even as David describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose, sin, whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Oh, but imputed righteousness is a heresy. Sure. Uh, because, again, if you don't, because it's only heresy if you're self righteous, I'll put it that way. Where was that? I think it was. Yeah, you can go to verse 11. And he received the sign of circumcision, the seal of righteousness of the faith, uh, which he had yet being uncircumcised, uncircumcised, sorry, that he might be the father of all them that believe, uh, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. Okay, Talking about how Abraham is basically, when you're saved, you're spiritually a part of the seed of Abraham. Okay, It's not, fit, not like replacing theology where the heretics say that you replace Israel. No, you're spiritually grafted in to the promises of that were uh, given to Abraham, okay? That's what it's saying in verse 11, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. Interesting. So when you're saved, righteousness is imputed to you. Uh, jump down to um, verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, uh, when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered out not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded what he had, uh, he was able also able also to perform. Sorry, not good at reading on a computer. Uh, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Okay, room, that's verse 22. Look at verse 23. But it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed. What's being imputed? Righteousness. Interesting. Uh, if we believe on him that raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who is delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. So when you believe on God the Father, 
because you know the Godhead, of course the Trinity is completely pagan, totally wicked, not going to get into that. But when you believe on God the Father, okay, the gospel essentially, when you believe on God the Father, you know, you get saved basically. Um, righteousness is imputed to you. That simple. Okay, and of course, again, I'm not I'm not an easy believism heretic. Okay, there is repentance of sins as part of your salvation. Second Corinthians, or sorry, Second Corinthians five nineteen, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Verse twenty. Now, now then, we are the ambassadors, our ambassadors of Christ, as through God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. Look at verse twenty one. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Again, you're not righteous without Jesus Christ. Okay, you're not holy without Jesus Christ. Again, Revelation fifteen four is clear that God is the only one that's holy. You're not holy without Jesus Christ. Okay, your righteousness, again, Isaiah 64, 6, your righteousness are as filthy rags in the eyes of God. Sorry, my voice is starting to give out. Uh, i trying to think of some more scriptures to go to. There's another, you know, simple one most people know of. Ephesians 2, 8. I'll go to verse 10 because I'm going to prove my point. For by grace are you saved through faith in that not of yourselves, okay, not of your obedience, not of your holiness. It is a gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. You see, when you're saved by works, you can boast. You can say, oh, look, look, look how good I am. Look how holy I am. Just like the Pharisee in Luke 18, 9 to 14. Go read that parable. The Pharisee was prideful and saying, oh, I thank thee I'm not as other sinners are. I, I'm pretty good. I'm a good person, you know. And it says in verse 9 of Luke 18 that, you know, it's a parable of them that trust it in themselves that they're righteous. See, these heretics like Richard Pekoski, they trust in themselves that they're righteous. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay? There's your changed life right there. You're created for good works. That's simple. Again, Titus, you can also read Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 14 on that. You're a people, God will, will basically sanctify you, a people peculiar, sorry, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Paraphrasing, of course. But there's a changed life that comes after your salvation. Okay? Not for your salvation. Uh, there's actually a verse these heretics like to try to say to try to refute can try to refute eternal security uh second timothy 2 12 if we suffer we shall also reign with him if we deny him he also will deny us okay and they'll say see see you can lose your salvation if you deny jesus if you deny jesus christ um keep reading to the very next verse okay they won't read the very next verse uh verse 13 if we believe not that he abideth faithful he cannot deny himself when you're a part of the body of christ Jesus Christ can't deny you, because if he, if he denies you, he'll be denying himself. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31, actually, I think it's verse 30. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 30. Yeah, for we are members of his body and of his, and of his flesh and of his bones, okay? You're part of Christ's body in a literal sense, almost. Okay, Ephesians 2, 6 says you're, you're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, okay? So if Christ were, de were denying you, he'd be denying himself, because you're part of his body. It's ridiculous these heretics just can't see that because again they lost they can't comprehend that because they have no holy spirit guiding them into all truth here's a really good verse to refute these devils who say you can lose your salvation okay you throw us to the one you use this on this one they can't they don't like that um it, it refutes their whole heresy of oh you can lose your salvation first peter 1 3 first peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 5 blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ which according to his abundant mercy okay salvation is from god not your own uh, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Again, Ephesians 2, 6, your seed in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It doesn't fade away. It's reserved in heaven for you. Okay? I mean, how do you get any more clear than that? But look at verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God, kept by the power of God, not by your righteousness, not by your obedience, but by the power of God, you're kept through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. You're kept by the power of God. You have a place in heaven that fadeth not away, that's reserved in heaven for you. How do you get around that? These devils they don't like passages like that. Uh, here's a, some verses on eternal security that these devils don't like. And I call them devils, because again, they're, they're of their father, Satan. They're trying to justify themselves. Um, uh, sorry. John chapter 6, verse 39. 
And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all, that all, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. When you get saved, when Jesus Christ, when you're part of his body, he won't lose you. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to think of, here's another good one. John chapter 5 and verse 24. And also I want to point out something too, because people will say, well, didn't you say earlier that Jesus Christ, you know, his, he wasn't to Christians? But here's the thing you got to understand, again, dispensation. Uh, the Gospel of John, I do believe, is a transitional book. Okay, it's transitioning from under the law to under grace, it's because a lot of what's in the Gospel of John mirrors what Paul wrote. So I do believe it's a transitional book, and it's transitioning from under the law to under grace. Okay, John five twenty four. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. Oh, but apparently Jesus Christ lied then, because you can still come into condemnation if you don't live in obedience and you, you know, don't endure to the end to be saved. They're calling Jesus Christ a liar, okay? And again, you should live holy. I'm not denying that. You should live holy. And again, the, the Holy Spirit comes and cleans your life up. It's called spiritual regeneration. These devils, again, have just no knowledge of that. Uh, sorry, I was, trying, I was just... Sorry, my, my, it's the middle, of the middle of the night. My brain's kind of just falling asleep on me. Just It's um, 2 a.m. in the morning right now. Uh, oh, yeah, here's a, one last verse to end this whole thing off. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Here's a really good one to refute these heretics. Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, okay, not by your self-righteousness, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Regeneration from the Holy Ghost. There's your spiritual regeneration, okay? So don't believe the lies of these conditional security papists, these work salvation Roman Catholics, like uh, Richard Pankowski. He's a, he's a lost devil. He's going to hell. He's trusting in himself to be saved and... It's going to be his uh, downfall. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.